Welcome back to Coding and a Cup of Java, lecture number six, more about methods. So before the break we were talking about method overloading, so we can had, could have uh, different methods with the same name, but we had different parameter lists. So now I'm going to show you a bigger example about, uh, well, how we can use it. And this example is going to use user inputs. So there we go with java.util.com scanner so we import that and then we do public class um, actually valid integer example 2 so we had oops that's not supposed to be there so the last uh, lecture the uh, lecture number five above methods and switch statements we had a uh, had the valid integer example the the first one and now I'm going to, um, it's not going to be the same, we w worked with uh, dates uh, in that example, but I'm going to use the same um, method that we used, uh, well, that we created back then. So the method we created was a static int um, next valid integer, right? So um, you could get the next valid integer from the scanner. So we first of all need the scanner we want to read it from, and then we want uh, the minimum value and the maximum value. So we want a value inside inside that range, basically. So if we ask for an integer between 5 and 10, then we want to get an integer between 5 and 10. So if we type hello, for instance, or we type cake or whatnot, that's not a number, it's not going to crash, it's going to handle that anyways. And if you type something that's too big or too small, it's not going to accept that. It's going to allow you to uh, add something else. So it's just the same thing, so I'm going to type it quite quickly here. So we have the integer in the beginning, and then we return the integer in the end, right? Um, okay, then we do a loop here, uh, as long as the integer is less than the minimum value, so that's invalid, or uh, as long as the integer is greater than the maximum value. So if it's invalid somehow, it's not in the given range, then we're going to continue this loop. Inside that loop, we're going to loop um, using a while loop, and that's going to loop as long as the scanner does not does not have a uh, integer as the next thing in its buffer. So what this means is that uh, well, I'm going to do scanner dot next. So what we will do here is it's exactly exactly the same as before, but what we will do is just remove everything that's not an integer. And as soon as we find an integer in in the uh, scanner's buffer, then we can exit out the loop, and therefore we can just read the next int here. And since we now have checked if there there are there is an integer there, this won't crash. We know for sure that this is actually going to give us an integer. And then we're going to check if it's in a valid range there. So um, well, yeah, let's just add some comments. Check if it's in the range. Um, get the integer, and finally remove anything that's not an integer. There you go. So this is the same method as before, but as you might realize, I'm going to overload it, so I'm going to have multiple max valid integers, but we'll see that in a bit. I'm going to start working on the example program, which is going to use the next valid integer, and also a few other versions of next valid integer. So let's get going here. Okay. So we need the scanner. We need we need to send the scanner to the next valid integer. Otherwise, we won't be able. To, well, that one won't be able to do anything, just because well, it's asking for a scanner, and therefore we have to give it a scanner. And this example is going to be about sp sending money to friends, uh, uh, taking loans from the bank, or buying things with the with the uh, money. So it's it's a bit ridiculous, but you know, why not? Okay, so we want to uh, print out uh, to the user how much ma money that user got. You have, um, let's do it in dollars. So we have that amount of money, like that. Okay, and then we will give the user a few different options what the user can do. What would you like to do? Okay, and then the options. So option one is to uh, send some money to a friend. Okay, it's always nice to send some money if you have some spare cash. Uh, so you send it to a friend. The second one is uh, taking a loan. Therefore, I want to do uh, 
to take a loan from the bank, obviously, or maybe from a friend, I don't know. The third one is uh, it's going to allow you to use a simple calculator, so you can calculate uh, about like your money and stuff. So, uh, uh, so you maybe you want to know how much money you will have left if you send like five dollars to your friend or whatnot. So it's going to include a simple calculator, and it's also going to uh, uh, let's yeah, it's going to allow you to buy a cake as well, just for you to be able to use the money. And then finally, we will allow the user to uh, to exit the program like that. Okay, so um, five options. Uh, so we have five valid numbers: one, two, three, four, and five. And we want the user to enter that with a integer. And we don't want to accept anything but an integer, and we want it in that specific range. So what do we use? Of course, the method that we already have. So next valid integer, uppercase V there. And then we give it the scanner that we have created, and then 1 and 5. Um, there you go. Thank you. OK. Um, so now we have a switch here, and we will have five different cases, right? And they will bre have breaks, all of them, well, most of them. So obviously they won't be empty, but I will, uh, I'm going to add the cases now that we're going to use. Case 4, break, and finally case 5. We don't need a, a, a default case in this scenario, because we know for sure that we just uh, we'll have 1 to 5. We won't have any other numbers because the next valid integer is not going to su supply us with anything else but n uh, an integer from uh, 1 to 5. So there's no reason to have default because those values will never happen. And since um, number 5 is supposed to exit the program, we can do use return instead. And now we I used this the last time as well, before we spoke about return types, but what is actually doing here is that we're returning out of the method that we're in, which is our main method, and the reason why I don't have a re anything after it, like return 3, is because the method's return type is void. That means we don't have to return anything, but we can still use return, but then we don't add any value afterwards, and what that's going to do is it's going to break out of the method we're currently in, and if you if you exit the main method, then you shut down the program. So that's why this is going to exit the program. So it doesn't work if we would use return here. Obviously, hey, here we're using return to return the integer. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, code the uh, the case here. So that's the send money to a friend. That case, and we want to know how much money you want to send, right? How much money would you like to send? And the amount of money the user can send is 1 to uh, the maximum amount of money you currently have. So that's money, right? Like that. So that's the amount of money you're allowed to send. And as you can see now, I'm actually not asking which friend to send to because, well, if so, we would need their bank accounts and everything. So. We're actually just going to ask for how much and just send it to some random uh, person. So now we can use next valid integer, and now it's quite simple. We just do my scanner one and money because one is the lowest amount you're allowed to send. You can't like send a negative amount, and sending zero doesn't make any sense. Um, so you can send from one dollar up to the amount you have. You can't send more do uh, money than you have, so th that's the maximum. And since next valid integer is going to make sure that the number we get is actually in the range, we don't have to bother about about the value we get because we know it's the uh, value we want. Uh, then we can do money. Uh, we decrease money uh, with the amount we are going to send, and then we can print out the uh, amount uh, of money we're sending. You just sent, and then uh, the amount of uh, money you sent, and then to uh, here you go to a random friend. I don't know why, why you would just do that, but so that's the uh, option one in this example. So as you can see now, we're just using next valid integer like like it wouldn't be a problem. So let's take a loan. 
and th this is the most awesome bank ever. We don't have to repay uh, back what we're loaning. Uh, loan would you like to take? Unfortunately, there's not a bank like that. But um, so we're just going to be able to loan money, so we will increase money by the amount we want, uh, basically. But now we get a problem here. How much will we be able to loan? Next valid integer. Okay, my scanner. Like, how much? Wh what should I type? What's the minimum value and what's the maximum value? I think I would... would you have to loan at least one dollar if you loan something but but do you well when you take a loan it has to be one dollar or more but should I really have a maximum amount in normal banks you they obviously need to check your income and everything if you're allowed to take a loan but in this thing that's just going to give us money there's no reason to have an upper limit so what do we do well there's something called uh, well we can do integer dot max value okay and what integer dot max value actually does is that it's going to give us the biggest possible integer that we can have. So we just do integer dot max value. So so the, we can check how big that is. That's quite uh, quite big. So it's a uh, it's like two billion, I think. Yeah, two billion. So, so that's the maximum amount because we, we're using integers, you can store that amount, so we allow you to loan one to that number. But, well, why do we have to have it like this? We, we, we just want to have, so tell it, well, we, we want to have the lowest possible number uh, to be one and then just higher than that, that's fine. So what we could do is to uh, do overload next valid integer. Okay with uh, something that is called scanner, scanner, and then we just add the minimum value, like so. And what do we do now? Well, we just have the minimum value, uh, and the real deal is going on the other method, so let's just ask the other method to do its job. We give it the scanner, we give it the minimum value, and then we give it the, uh, the max uh, value here. So, um, so yeah, so now I can just call next va valid integer instead um, and just give it a scanner and minimum value. Or if I wo would want to, I can give it a scanner, a minimum value and a maximum value. So all of a sudden I've overloaded this with two different versions. I have the main thing that actually does everything and I have another thing that allows me to skip one parameter and then I'm just going to use this default value instead. Okay, looks fine to me. So here I have, I'm using one and money, here I'm just using one, okay? And then I can use that to uh, increase the money. So I'm increasing the money with the amount of cash uh, in the loan that you took. And then we print out that you actually took that loan, okay? And then we do, uh, you just took a loan of, uh, loan of and then some dollars here, plus, uh, there you go. Okay, so, so now we have two different next value integers here, and now I'm going to add a simple calculator that you can use to calculate your, your money, well, calculate how much money you have, but it's going to be ridiculously simple, yes, for this example. So, uh, please enter to, uh, well, D2, integers you want uh, to calculate the sum for. So we're actually going, going to allow the user to enter two integers, nothing more at all. Uh, and it's just going to sum them together. So we've we'd done more advanced calculators in earlier lectures, but this is not an example of, of that part. So now I might want to, well, I, I just want two integers, any integers at all, right? Next valid integer, uh, my scanner, but I still want it to be a valid integer I don't want you to be able to type type in something else entirely like cash that's not an integer um, so I would like to give it something else here and we had max value so we also have integer dot min value that we can use for the minimum amount uh, well the, the for the min value so if we don't have 
uh, minimum value um, that would be the same as setting the minimum value as the lowest possible number because then we can't have any numbers the user can't type any numbers that are smaller than that that specific value so I would like to have uh, overloaded again and have something called uh, next valid integer with just a scanner and then I can do the same thing for my second number here and then I can just print out the result so system dot art so a, a ridiculously simple uh, calculator and then we get the result as number one we add uh, that together with number two and then we print out the result like this number one plus number two okay but obviously this is not going to work if we compile um, it's going to complain uh, next next valid integer doesn't exist uh, with just my scanner here. We doesn't have we don't have any method called that. So let's create that one. We can do it very easily. I'm just going to copy that one and remove this parameter here. So if you don't want the minimum one and you don't want the maximum one, then well just use the uh, use it like this. So we have the um, minimum value as the uh, minimum value there and the very maximum value as the maximum value here and if we do it like that then this condition here will never ever be uh, true because we can't find an integer that is smaller than a minimum value and we can't find an integer that is uh, larger than the maximum value so we basically just disable the do while loop completely and therefore we just want to find an integer which we do inside of uh, here with the while loop and then when we found an integer, we're fine with that, and we just return that. Right. So um, then we can use that, and then we can uh, uh, finish up this example uh, by allowing you to actually spend the money. This doesn't really use the um, next valid integer, but just so we can uh, do something with, with it. So time for a cake, right? And then if you have enough money for a cake... Um, we want to well print out that well nice cake or something like that, and finally just uh, decrease uh, the amount of money you have by 15. And otherwise, we we just type out that you can't afford it. So this is just for us to have something we can spend the money on. Obviously, we can send send the money away, uh, but but yeah, can't afford a cake. Okay, there you go. So if I compile the program now. Uh, we can run it. So if I hit run here, okay. So what do we want to do? Well, I would like to send some money to a friend. Okay, I can send from one to fifty. The reason why I can send one to fifty uh, is because I have fifty dollars I can send. Uh, so it's printing out that there as well. And therefore, it's also going to check that that's in the correct range. So this is the normal uh, next valid integer. So then I can type, for instance, zero. I can't send zero, so it's not going to accept that. I can't send a cake. It's not going to accept that. So so, so it doesn't work. I can't send like more money than I have, but I can send like 30 bucks. There you go. So now I have 20 bucks myself, uh, because I sent 30 to a random friend. Um, and then I can do, well, maybe, well, I'm, I'm low, low on cash. I want to take a loan here. And I can add like any integer, any big integer here. I can't do zero because that's not a loan. But I can do like 300. And now I have 320. And what's going on here is the the uh, next valid integer that we have here. We have overloaded it. So we have another version of next valid integer that has a scanner and an integer. And that one is down here. And what that one is doing is that it's calling the 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 next valid integer method that we actually have the both values of but we use the uh, one default maximum value which is the largest uh, value of as an integer of in you can't have any bigger than that this this well you can't basically uh, and if we want to use the calculator we have no limitation at all we can do whatever we want um, like that so those two together, minus 23,131 plus 23,123 uh, equals minus 8. 
and that's because well we have this last thing here um, the next valid integer that does only accept the scanner uh, but then we're calling the other one and return that one's value and we give it the minimum value, the uh, smallest possible value for an integer as the minimum value and the largest possible value for an integer as the maximum value. So as you can see now we're using overloading to uh, give the coder a option of calling the, uh, the method in different ways. Of course you can do completely different things when you overload. Uh, it's completely up to you. We can type whatever code you want here. But in this scenario here, I've used it to have three different version of the same versions of the same method, and then you can give it either just a scanner, you can give it a scanner and a minimum value, and you can give it a scanner, a minimum value, and a maximum value. And to to make things easier, the real code goes goes in just one of them, and the other ones are just calling that one and returning that value. So that's overloading for you. That's all I'm going to talk about it. Um, but we have something more that I want to talk about, and that's called recursion. So recursion is when a method it's call is calling itself um, a number of times. So let's get going with that. Recursion example. Okay, so I need public static void main. And string and args there. There you go. Uh, right, and th then first of all, I'm a bit silly now because I'm not going to use recursion. So I'm going to uh, reverse a string. I want to make a method that reverses the string using iteration. And iteration is when we're using loops. So um, if we look like... I've done it before. In, I, I can't remember which lecture, but I did it uh, earlier. It might have been... Uh, the loops one reversed. So we start. We we need a start uh, value. So we set the start value to be uh, an empty string, and then we just loop through the. Uh, here you go. The different uh, characters. We loop through all the characters in the string, and then we just put them back together into the reverse one. But we do it in the opposite order by doing it like that. So what I do is, uh, I have reversed here, I add the character at a specific position, and then I add the rest. So I'm going to add uh, the, the first character uh, first, but then everything else is going to be added in front of it. And then we can return reversed in the end like that. So this is not recursion at all, this is iteration, which means that we're uh, using a loop, we're iterating here, we're iterating through all the characters in the string, and then we put them back in the opposite order. The reason why I'm doing iteration here is because I'm going to show you recursion, which is an alternative uh, which we can use to, to do the same thing. So reverse, string, and then we type hello world. So like I said, no recursion yet. Hit compile, save, yes, and then I'm supposed to run it, and we can see, yeah, blah, blah, I don't know how to pronounce that. So if you read it backwards, you will see that it says, hello world. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but with, the, uh, with recursion, and I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. So we need the same things. We need uh, to return a string, we need to have the reverse string, method and then we want to get a string as well. So as you can see I continue with it here for for iterator or iteration and rec here for recursive or recursion. And how do we do this? Well what this means, what a recursion is, like I said before, we just mentioned it, is that it's going to call itself. So we're going to call uh, ourselves uh, multiple times. So what I want to do is I want to return a value. Uh, I want to return the reverse string, and how, how do I calculate that? Well, I'm going to calculate it by calling myself and reverse the string. Um, here we go, S str, the string, substring1. And what substring1 is doing is that it's going to give us the string, the whole string, but the first character. So we don't get the first character. So if we do hello world, we're going to strip off the h and just get hello world like that. And I'm going to reverse that one. Okay, so I'm going to call myself and reverse that. And then when I've reversed that, then I'm going to add the H itself, so the first character. 
like that. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to get everything but the first character, reverse that, and then finally add it to the, the last, well, to the first character, which will be the last one because we're reversing everything. But this won't work. We're going to call ourselves for an infinity. Uh, we're just going to call, call it forever, and we're going to, well, in the end crash because we're just calling ourselves all the time. So what we'll have to do is add a base case, a, a case that is going to be our very basic uh, condition here, and that's when we don't have a string at all. So uh, if the length of the string has been decreased to zero, that we have removed all the characters, then what we want to do is that we want to return an empty string. That's going to give us a, a case that allows us to break out of this infinite um, uh, call to ourselves. So we're going to call ourselves until we reach a position where this length of the string equals to zero, so that this string is gone, basically. Or, well, we have a string, but it's empty. And uh, when we do so, we return nothing. So when you reverse, when you, when you want to reverse nothing, then you get nothing. Uh, and then we're going to fall back through everything, because remember, when you have run the code in a method, then you will go back from where, you, where to where you called it from. And it doesn't matter that we called it from uh, from within ourselves. So uh, if we go return nothing here, we're going to go back uh, down here where we called it from. We called it from 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 it somewhere else. And uh, what this basically is doing is, well, we reverse nothing, and then we add that to the the last character. Then we return that. So now we just have the last character. We get back here. Then we we have the last character here, and then we add the second to the la last character of the the last character, and then we send that back. We get here, and then we add the third to the last character. So as you can see, we are actually uh, going. We di go deep. We call ourselves multiple times, and then when we fall back, we actually stitch this st uh, string together, but backwards. So now, if I compile this, oh well, I need to actually call it as well. So if I do the recursive version on the hello world, if I run it, I'm going to get the same thing. So it's backwards. So it might uh, be a bit tricky to grasp what it does, but what we're doing, we're calling ourselves doing parts of the pro uh, of the uh, algorithm each time we do so. We're going to reverse reverse one character at a time. We're making the the uh, parameter here shorter each time. And uh, then we add the missing character at the end there. And then we finally have this base case here. And then we return uh, nothing if so. So if we want to rever reverse nothing, then we will get nothing back. And well, it's probably easier in many cases to use the, uh, the one with the loop for iterating through it. But in some cases, it's better with recursive. And I'm not going to talk about it too much in this course. I'm going to mention it a bit more, what we can use it for in the uh, next course. But I just wanted to show you this. It's very good to have in some coding languages. In Java, it works pretty well in many cases to just use the loop. But but um, it's very handy in, in, in a few cases. So don't think it's useless, it's very good to have. Um, but that's about it um, for, for that part. So, since this is the last lecture of this course, uh, I have prepared the assignment. You probably can't see it too well, it's, it's quite small, but it will be uploaded to the uh, the course page of the, after this lecture, so you can, can get it from there and, uh, well, do it, basically. So, the assignment works like... Uh, like this, you code it, then you send it in to me, I'm going to mark it. If everything is correct, then you pass the course. If it's not correct, I'm going to send it back to you, comment on what's wrong, uh, like what you have to think about, and then you can fix it and send it back to me. Uh, it's cont The assignment itself contains that inf information, that's the first uh, paragraph there. And the assignment itself is about a chop. So you're supposed to write a program where the um, where the user is a customer and the user has $100 to buy items with and uh, 
if I read uh, what it is, it's a write a program that gives the user the ability to add the different items to their shopping basket. The user can have more than one of each type of, uh, of the item in the shopping basket, and the user can also have more items in the shopping basket than it can afford. There should also be an option to see what items there are in the shopping basket, as well as a way for the user to remove certain items from the shopping basket. There should finally be an option to pay for all the items and ex exit the shop. If the user can afford all the items, the program should print out how much money there, there's left after the purchase, as well as what items were bought. Um, um, then after that the program will exit. However, if the user can't afford the items in the shopping basket, an error message should be shown and the user should remain in the shop. This allows the user to enter the, uh, the content of the shopping basket to check that, to, to alter it, and pay for the items when that's possible. So there's more info information about that, I just read the core part there. So get it from the course page, do it, hand it in. Um, well, you can't hand it in right now. Uh, the uh, the hand in uh, system on the web, web page is not quite finished. It will take a few hours more, but you can start uh, doing it as soon as this lecture is over. I'm going to upload it there. So that's about it for this lecture. Let's see what we've learned. Right, so we started about um, parameter values. So how are they sent in to a uh, method. So we have my method there at the end. So in this case we're going to print out 5 and 2 because first we're going to send 2 into the uh, method. We're going to change the parameter there to 5 afterwards, print it all out and then we're going to go back into the main method and print out the value of the variable. So we will print out 5 because the parameter is 5 but the variable hasn't changed at all and therefore we will print 2. Right. If we change this to variables, uh, well, uh, not variables, to I integer array variables, so we have arrays, uh, so I have the array 3, 1, and 2, and I want to print out the uh, element at index 2. And I s also send it into a method called my method, which takes a parameter uh, that is an array, but inside the array I assign it to be a new integer, a completely different integer array, and then print out the element at index 2. If I do it like that, I'm still not going to get the same result on, the, on both of them. So I'm going to get 4 and 2. 4 because the second element in the other array there, the parameter array, has a 4. And 2 because the last uh, element there in the first array is, is 2. So I get 4 and 2. However, if I change it just a tiny little bit, so instead of creating a new array entirely, I'm changing the current array, so I set that the element at uh, index 2 should be 4, and then I print that out. Obviously that's going to print out 4, but then also I'm printing out 4 when I'm getting the element at uh, the index 2 of the array. So uh, remember, if we alter the array, it's we're going to alter the original one as well, because we just have one array. We send along the value, but we still just have one array. So, so um, Keep that in mind. Then we had the var args, the uh, the parameter type there. So we type the type in this case int, and then we do dot 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 a space and then the name of the parameter. And if we do it like that, we can uh, use the numbers there. In this case, it, we call it numbers. We can use it as if it would be an array. So we do int. Uh, number, colon, numbers, so that's a for each loop. We just loop through the numbers and print them all out. If we do it like this, uh, we can call them from, from the main method, as you can see. We call it using 5, 1, 2, and 1 in one case, so that's four different numbers. We call it once without any numbers, so you can do that, remember that. And then you can also do uh, 10 and 7, and I see that I misspelled it. It says me method instead of my method there. It's obviously supposed to say my method. I will fix that. Okay. And then we spoke about method overloading, so we can have different uh, methods uh, that have the same name as long as they have different parameter lists. In this case here, it's quite simple. One has a string and one has an integer. Of course, we can have uh, have two methods that have like 20 parameters being the exact same, but one of them have like a 21th. 21, 21st uh, parameter as well, th and therefore they will have different parameter lists, so that's totally fine. So as long as they have different um, lists like that, then it's going to work. It's not enough to have different return types, but they can have different return types if their, par if their parameter li lists are different from each other. Then we had recursion, so here's our reverse um, 
we're reversing the string and this is the same code that we had in the last example and what we'll do here is we call um, we, we call the same method uh, over and over again until we reach this base case that we have that base condition there so if we don't have any string at all we're going to return an empty string and then we're going to fall back and restitch the string together but now when we restitch it we're doing it backwards just because we have the reversed things in the beginning and then the first character that we were not reversing we have that at, at the start there so that's about it. We have the questions and exercises as well, so that document still exists even though we have an assignment. So que the questions are uh, for you to see if you've learned what this lecture is all about. The exercises are there for you to practice the things you've learned. And the further explorations are usually there for you to continue with more advanced things. But in this case, we don't have any further explorations because we have the assi assignment instead. So when, you, when you're ready with, with what you learned, then you can go with the assignment and see what you've learned throughout the course and see if you can, can manage to write that program. We have answers and, and uh, possible solutions to the questions and exercises to see uh, if, if your answers to the questions are correct or to give you an example of how a possible solution to the exercises would look like. So that's about it for this lecture and actually this whole course. These six um, lectures has been the first course, Coding in a Cup of Java. And the next course, Thinking with Objects, will start uh, in a few days. And I hope to see you there as well, if, if that's something you want to learn about. So this has been Coding and a Cup of Java, lecture number six, more about methods. I've been VSWE and I hope you've enjoyed it.